Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools, and on today's episode, if you want to learn how we built this beautiful concrete countertop, keep on watching. Let it start it. First off, I built this beautiful backyard barbecue station in my last week's video. However, I kept out the process of actually building the concrete countertop, which is what I'm obviously doing in this video. So if you do want to check out the whole process, please check out that one through the link above or below. Ooh. Now this bad boy is the actual frame and lip of the countertop and this is just a preset form and the beauty about this system is that you can actually just leave it in place and break it off as in you can just break that lip off have a perfect edge all the way down and this is just inset permanently you don't have to worry about it easy cleanup perfect edge that's what I call DIY friendly let's get it installed now because we already have our countertop substrate already fully installed, which was just half inch cement board, it's now just time to install our lip. Now this is called out as a concrete countertop form, and this specific style is their commercial grade because this is a three inch thick front face. Now this is a very substantial lip and a substantial countertop, which I just think is more industrial looking, as well as the fact that because it's going outside, I want something a little bit more durable, and the thicker, the better. Now as for installing, all I do is apply a layer of silicone at the bottom, then pre-drill my holes, and then just screw them into place. Very simplistic. However, if you want a nice little tip on actually how to find it from corner to corner, I suggest using your speed square, drawing a line at the specific center of that corner, then just marking it, cut it at a 45 degree angle using your chop saw, then you have a perfect mitered corner at that location. Now in all honesty, the silicone may be a bit of overkill and you probably don't need it. However, I just find that having silicone in that place means that there's not gonna be any leaks whatsoever because it will be a significant barrier, whether it's either the adhesive purposes or the fact that moisture just does not like silicone. Now the vast majority of all these cuts is just a nice 45 degree mitered edge. However, when you get to the center location where the barbecue is, that's a different story. And this is a little bit more of a creative process. Now specifically, I took my level and on both sides, I figured out exactly where the height needed to be. Now it changes because you're mounting this piece to the bottom side on the underside versus the top side. Now you're easily able to run your form board through your table saw. After I have that taken care of, I then apply a bit of silicone, attach it to the bottom side of the cement board substrate, and then I'm able to screw it in position as well as remove it after I take the forms out. Now as you're installing this entire system, you just want to ensure that all the top edges are at the same height because we will be screening over this entire surface, so it is very important to make sure all those top lips are at the same height overall. Now I also would highly suggest siliconing the edges of that inside corner because if you don't, there is a likelihood that it could spill out into the barbecue itself and that's the last thing we want at this point. Now to ensure that there's no leaks at our mitered corners, I make sure to apply a couple different types of tape. The first tape is that silver tape which is actually more HVAC foil tape which I've used in multiple applications. Inevitably, it's a very good sticky tape and it sticks very well to plastic surfaces. However, I did want to bolster it up and bulk it up a bit, which is why I added a second layer of duct tape afterwards because who doesn't love duct tape and it just adds a layer of stability that hopefully will prevent any natural disasters or in this case, project disasters. Now after you have your forms fully installed, I then suggest just taking a quick vacuum throughout the entire channel, just so you can ensure you are picking up all the loose debris particles. Now, Concrete Countertop Solutions also provides and manufactures their Z-Licrete system. Now this comes with a number of different things. Number one would be this fiber mesh reinforcement as well as the clips that come with it. Now this is basically in substitution of rebar and with a slab this thick, you definitely want some type of reinforcement because you want as much structurability in this slab as humanly possible. The nice thing about this fiber mesh system is the fact that you're easily able to cut it and position it however you want comparatively to rebar, which definitely takes some time and energy compared to this system. Now you're easily able to fasten these clips down, however you don't have to do this to every single one, I just did them to the handful that were in the corners to hold them in place. 
Once you have that taken care of, I then proceed to wrapping the entire thing with the Visqueen because it will get a little messy and I don't want concrete all over the place. I want it somewhat of a controlled mess, right? And there you have it. Look at that. Everything is ready to go for our pour. Grill neck is in, countertop forms in, Visqueen's up, ready to pour. Let's do this. As for tools, you'll need both of these. The one on the left is a magnesium float, and the one on my right is a steel trowel. Now they do serve two different purposes, so I will go into more detail once we start using them. Now as for the mix itself, we are using the z Liquid system. Now this is a proprietary blend of materials that actually have acrylic fibers in it. As you can see in the mix, there's specific fibers that basically give it a lot of strength and durability, especially when you mix it all together. Together. Now all you need for the mix is this water and concrete sand. Now we are using Sacrete sand mix. Now this is a very standard sand mix that you can buy at your local Home Depot generally. However, there are a number of different brands out there that you can choose from. Now the instructions say to mix one bag of Lycrete with five quarts of water and a 60 pound bag of sand. Mix them all together and make sure you mix them thoroughly. Now they specifically mentioned to actually have a power mixer along with a few five or 10 gallon buckets. Unfortunately, I was not able to get that type of mixer unless I wanted to buy one and therefore I did it in my trusty wheelbarrow. Now the process of mixing is definitely key as I noted, but specifically making sure you have the right consistency is very important. The right consistency will allow you to maneuver the material directly as well as it getting into all the correct crevices, nooks, and crannies along the way. Now you also want to be mindful of pulling that fiber mesh upwards so the concrete isn't actually pushing it all the way down. In theory you want it in the middle of the concrete slab, not at the bottom or the top, obviously. Now as you can see, I'm using my magnesium float basically just to position the concrete smoothly and evenly across the substrate. Now it's a very easy tool to work with and it makes life a lot easier, especially if you have one that's thick like this because you can really push the concrete any way you want. Now once concrete is at the correct height and filled to the brim, I then take a 2x4 and use that as a screed. Now as you can see, it's resting solely against our plastic concrete form and I just gently and consistently go back and forth with the 2x4, which magically evens out the concrete behind it. Now, as you can see, my sand mix was very hard in some circumstance, and I really wish that was not the case. There is very large chunks, which basically just were rock hard, and I really had to filter through this sand mix, and hopefully you guys don't have this specific issue. However, I did, and therefore, even though I added the correct water ratio mix to this concrete, looking back, I still feel like it was way too hard of a consistency as far as thickness goes, and wish it was a little bit smoother to maneuver. Now this didn't really affect the top of the surface, however I do feel like it affected the sides of it and you'll see why later on in this video. Now after I have the entire thing filled, I then screed the remainder and then use my magnesium float to float over the entire surface. Now the magnesium float is used at this point right after you pour it because it flattens the entire surface smooth while still opening up those fresh pores of the concrete which will allow bleed water to evaporate and the air bubbles to escape. Now at a certain point I do take a vibrating palm sander to all of the edges just to hopefully reduce as much of the air bubbles as humanly possible on all of the edges. Now there are a number of different ways you can vibrate the sides, however, this is probably the, one of the more feasible ways to do so since sanders are pretty readily available. Just, you know, make sure you're not using sandpaper with it. Now after an hour or two, the bleed water of the concrete will reduce greatly and therefore it will start hardening appropriately. That's when you start taking your steel trowel. Now this is if you want a beautifully smooth steel trowel finish. However, we are going to abrade the surface with some sanding discs, and this will just give you more of an exposed aggregate look, which is what the client was going for. Okay, that might have been a long day, but guess what? This looks pretty amazing. I poured that side first, this side second. Still need to wait a little bit longer before we can uh, metal trowel that bad boy, but it is looking oh so good. 
And there you have it, 24 hours later, beautiful concrete slab. Let's bust this bad boy open. In my mind, there's always some type of satisfying point with a project, and this was definitely one of those points because this was a lot of work to get to, but once you start peeling away that framework and realizing that that edge looks very nice, not perfect, but very nice, the easeability of actually removing this type of framework is extremely impressive to me, and I can't imagine doing one of these countertops without this type of lip system. Now, as I mentioned previously, I really do think because the mix was so thick due to the fact that that sand was very dry, I would also highly suggest actually vibrating as you go because I just vibrated the edges once I poured the entire thing. As I look back, the areas in which I started probably were a little too hard before I started vibrating those edges, so keep that in mind. Now in the areas where I had more consistent holes, I then just mixed up a very small batch of the same concrete, filled in those holes, smoothed it out with my hand, and just let it dry. Now that's a quick easy patch, and as I let that dry, I then proceed to sanding. Now we're using concrete countertop solution sanding discs. Now these are diamond plated sanding discs that go from 60 grit to 120 to 200 grit. It's a very nice strong hook and loop system and when I mean strong it is definitely strong because it took a moment to pull the sucker off between grits. Now I'm using a high-end veritable speed random orbital sander that is also hooked up to my dust collection system. So any of the dust and debris that's being created with the sander is then hopefully being picked up with the vacuum system. Now I'm still wearing a respirator just in case, but the vacuum system really does take care of a lot of the debris along the way. Now I go over the entire surface with 60 grit, then 120, and then 200 grit, just to ensure that I have a perfectly smooth, even texture over the entire slab. And just like any of the tools or materials found on this channel, I will leave links in the description box below on where to actually purchase them, as well as note that Concrete Countertop Solutions was a huge help on this project, and they did not pay me for this video, but they did send me this free supply kit, and I was really happy with working with it, especially with the fact that this is the first time I'm using it, and I definitely foresee other Concrete Countertop projects in the near future. Now as for the edges, they have this perfect little gem pad which has 60 grit, 150, and 300 grit sandpaper. Now I specifically use this on all the edges just to make sure we have perfectly round edges throughout the entire slab. Now because we're installing a built-in barbecue station, we do need to recess these side edges. Now in the last video that I linked previously, I have a perfect cutout for our inset barbecue. However, it needs to be recessed on the edges and therefore I need to cut out both sides of the concrete slab in these locations. Now the beauty about concrete is that it's a very easy material to cut through if you have the right tool. And this is definitely the right tool. This is a diamond cutting blade for your grinder and specifically it cuts extremely quickly and easily through concrete as you can see right there. Now I do set up my vacuum right above it just to try and vacuum up as much as the dust and debris as possible because it does get extremely dusty once you start grinding into this. Once the grinding is complete I then go over the entire surface and try and suck up all the dust and debris that I possibly can. Then I go over the entire surface with a tack cloth, which is just basically a very sticky cloth that's built in but doesn't leave any residue. And as you can see, it picks up plenty that the vacuum can't even pick up. Now it is finally time to finish, and for finish, we are using Aquathane M35 from Concrete Countertop Solutions. Now this is a two-part, four-to-one ratio, and it is specifically designed for exterior concrete countertops. Now I did choose to go with more of a satin look because I want it to be more of a natural feel and inevitably that's what you're going to get. You can get something that's more glossy, however I did not want a glossy countertop. I wanted a natural looking concrete countertop. Now for application purposes I'm using two items. On the sides I'm using a soft foam brush. Now a foam brush in my opinion is 
perfect for this type of application because it allows you to really push the finish into those small crevices if there are any. Now, the nice thing about this is that I wanna make sure I have full penetration over the entire side and the foam brush really allows that. Now, after I have the sides taken care of, I then proceed to rolling on finish on the top portion of the countertop. Now with that, I'm using a nice foam roller and that just evenly distributes the finish across the entire surface. Very easy, very simple at this point. And at the tail end of a project like this, it's always nice to have something that is actually simple, right? Now, we put one coat on already and this instructions actually says you put a second coat on between four and eight hours, but if you miss that window, you have to take a sanding block with 300 grit sandpaper and just lightly scuff the area and then apply second coat. So, we have to slightly sanding. Now I didn't apply that second coat between that four to eight hour window just because I did the first coat at the tail end of the day and therefore I wasn't gonna be staying around another four hours to try and put on a second coat. Luckily for us, it was very easy just to scuff up the surface just a tad bit, then vacuum it up, and then proceed to applying the second coat. And guess what? At this point, all we have to do is let it dry. The very next day, I come back. Luckily, I have a helping hand to lift this Mondo barbecue in place, hook up the gas line as well as the electro, and guess what? We are done! Concrete is one of those products that's incredibly versatile and the beauty and the structurability of a concrete countertop is by far one of the most intriguing factors of the entire project. It has so much character and yes, I know it's not perfect, but who doesn't love a little character? I mean, just because you are a character doesn't mean you have character. Who can tell me the name of that movie? It's one of my favorites. Now this is one beautiful, sexy beast. Oh yeah. This is what we call a whoopsie daisy. <laughs>